Hello everyone, welcome to Hillside Harvest Homestead. We invite you to come join us as we start our homesteading journey. Hey everyone, today I'm inside and I'm working on spinning. Not the bicycle spinning, but the fiber spinning. So today I'm gonna to go over both the drop spindle and the spinning wheel. It's your choice of what you wanna do. Um, totally depends on just, you know, what you feel comfortable with. However, I would, if you're just starting out, totally recommend starting with a drop spindle. Um, rather than a spinning wheel. The drop spindles, um, you can go a little slower in that process and it just helps you learn how to work with consistency, how to learn to draft or pull your fibers out um, because that can be one of the hard things to learn when you're first starting out is how to draft. If you are working with a spinning wheel right away, that spinning wheel just keeps going and going and going and it has a tendency to pull the fiber out of your hand if you're not ready for it and you don't know how to draft it'll just want to pull it out of your hand and then you get into this like tug of war with your spinning wheel so and it gets really frustrating so I would recommend working with a drop spindle first there's different kinds of drop spindles it really doesn't matter um, they're you know they're not expensive um, but I would work with that first so what you need with your drop spindle is a lead on here and it's just regular yarn that you've tied to it that's long enough that um, it's going to go ahead and wrap around the whole spindle and then have some left over at the top because this is what you're going to attach your fiber to. A book that I would recommend, um, highly recommend, is called Respect the Spindle. That's one that I learned from. Um, great teaching in there, really good pictures and everything that help you see what they're talking about. It explains things really well. Um, it's focused more on drop spindles than it is on spinning wheels. However, it does teach you a little bit about spinning wheels. So um, it can take a little time to get used to spinning. Don't expect um, your first project to turn out very well. Um, expect it to just kind of be a, a trasher. Um, what I did with my first project was I actually made this hanger. Let me get the fiber off of here. Because it was so tightly wound that I couldn't do anything with it. So I just braided this really long rope, if you will, and then brought the two ends together and braided it down here and then tied it off. So then what I use this for, because it can be difficult when you're using a drop spindle to hang on to fiber while you're trying to learn how to spin, I just simply, like what you saw, um, put this fiber right around the handle of this. And then you've got your fiber right there ready for you. And it's easy to use okay so what you're going to start with first and it's a little more difficult to do when you're standing because if you're sitting um, you can stop your spindle from spinning because if it's um, if you get a lot of spin in your fiber it will actually start to unwind because it wants to work against that um, that twist that's in there so what you can do if you're sitting is you can put your spindle on the ground or you can put it in between your knees, whatever you need to, to get it to stop, um, but keep that twist in here. And then you can catch up by continuing to draft more fibers and um, get twist into it. When you're standing, especially if you're starting, like I'm doing, it's going to be a little difficult. So what I would end up doing is just um, putting the spindle between my knees real quick to get it to stop spinning because I don't want it to unspin or it's just gonna unspin all that fiber that and not attach it to this lead and it's gonna drop and I'm not gonna be able to get my fiber wound onto my spindle. Okay, so what you wanna do, you've got your lead, you've got fiber 
And we're gonna just give it plenty, oh, plenty of loose fiber. I'm gonna, this is called drafting, where you pull it out. I'm gonna draft a little. I've got plenty of fiber along this lead. Okay, I'm gonna hold it at the top of this yarn, pinch it. This is gonna be my pincher hand. Okay, this is gonna be my flicking hand. And you can flick your spindle either clockwise or counterclockwise, doesn't matter. It just needs to be the same. And then you're gonna make your next, once you fill up your spindle, you'll take it off, you'll start another thread. You're gonna spin it in that one in the same direction that you spun your last one. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take those strands then you're going to spin those two strands, or if you have three or four strands, however many you want, you're going to spin those together. And what you're going to do with that is, that's called plying, you're going to spin them in the opposite direction that you spun your original fiber strands in. So I usually always flick it counterclockwise just because it's easiest for me. And then when I ply, I will spin it clockwise. So flicking it. I'm going to let this get all nice and twisty in here. See, it twisted that fiber right on there. Okay, I've got a lot of twist in here. I'm going to go ahead and over twist it. I can feel the twist right up against my fingers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my spindle in between my legs. I'm going to pinch my fingers together. This now is my pincher finger, the bottom one. I'm going to draft out and I'm gonna pinch up at the top here and let that twist come in right up to my hand. Okay, I'm gonna spin some more, give it a flick. I'm gonna stop it, put it between my legs, put my hands together, draft, pull some fiber out that's nice and thin, pinch with my top hand and let go with my bottom hand and that twist has come up to my top pincher hand. And I'm gonna keep doing that, flick. Now I've got more space. It's gonna spin longer, but it has stopped. I don't want it to unwind, so I'm gonna stop it, put it in between my legs, hands together, draft, pinch, and release. And I'm gonna do that a few more times. It's spinning longer, so I don't have to stop it right away. As a beginner, you're going to want to stop it because you're not going to be drafting real quickly. And that's totally fine. You stop it as much as you need. Okay, so I've got a long enough piece. Here's my lead. And I have a long enough piece of yarn that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it off of the hook. I'm going to unwind my lead now. I'm just going to simply wrap my yarn along this shaft, up and down. Okay, leave enough that you can go ahead and wrap that yarn up that shaft and hook. Use that hook. Okay, now same thing. I've just got a short piece here, so I'm going to spin it, stop it, draft, pinch, and release. Again, spin, stop it. I'm going to pinch my fingers together, draft, stop, and release. And that's how you make yarn, and that's how you do that with a drop spindle. And you just keep going and this gives you plenty of time to be able to learn how to draft consistently so you get the same size yarn it's a much slower process but this is a much better beginning process than using the spinning wool or spin, spinning wheel see how slow I can go now, if I was using a spinning wheel, I would not be able to go this slow. I'd have to constantly stop my foot from pedaling to be able to catch up. Okay, I'm going to unwind it, 
and then wind it onto the spindle. And that's your drop spindle. That's as easy as that is. It's not a big deal if you drop it, which is why it's called a drop spindle because um, especially the longer you're doing this, the more fiber you have on it, the heavier it actually gets. And so if you're making uh, like a real thin yarn, it's gonna be really easy for you to drop the spindle because it gets heavy and it's gonna to wanna to break that yarn apart. So not a big deal. All you have to do because if it breaks, let me put the spindle here. If it breaks, it's not a big deal. You just unwind a little bit from your yarn side so that you've got some loose fibers like this. You're going to take the fibers in your other hand that you want to spin, draft some, and get some drafted out wool. And then you're going to put those together. Okay, and then you'll start spinning again. And it spins them together. Keep drafting. And there you go, you've connected it. And that's all that there is to that. So not a big deal if you drop it. It's expected that you drop it. That's why it's called a drop spindle. The one thing in both the drop spindle and in the spinning wheel is that you want to make sure you don't get this twist into this fiber because if you do and you're you don't pinch your hands together correctly this spin gets into this fiber that you're trying to draft and it makes it really hard to try to draft that fiber out so then you're going to end up drafting farther back and you're going to end up with a clunk, with a big um, uneven spot in your yarn. And so you want to try to keep pincher hands from letting that, fight, that twist get into your drafting zone. Okay, it's, it's very frustrating when that happens. It, it is going to happen, especially when you first start, but you've got to pinch that twist off before you move your hands. Pinch that twist off and don't let it get in to that drafting space. And that's your drop spindle. Now we'll go over spinning wheel. And with the spinning wheel, there's also another book that I recommend and it's called Start Spinning. Again, that is a really good information book. It gives you great, clear information and instructions, really good pictures that go along with what they're doing. And they were really good, good books, both of those, Respect the Spindle and Start Spinning. I'm not trying to sell these books or anything. I don't, you know, I'm not a sponsor. So, but when I come across something that works really well, I want to be able to share that. These are two books that really helped. So I'll give you um, the tools. I'll show you the tools that you need to have. So this is what you need to have for a drop spindle. I would also recommend a couple other things. We'll go over those, which you need for a drop spindle and you need for a spinning wheel. So um, we'll go over those things. I'll get set up real quick and then we'll start on the spinning wheel. Okay, so a couple of the tools that you're going to want to have, whether it's with a spinning wheel or it's with a drop spindle, is a nitty knotty. okay? They come in different sizes, but this is what you're going to wrap your finished yarn on, um, and this is how you make a skein. So you're going to want the nitty knotty, and I'll show you how to use that once I get to that point, but nitty knotty is what you want. There's a lot of different tools that you can get. You don't have to buy them all. Not all of them are necessary. Some of them are really nice and make things convenient, but um, some things you can hand make. Um, for instance, this 
is my handmade one. You can buy one of these, which um, what they are, it's for plying, spinning several different strands of yarn together. Um, and there are some spinning wheels actually have these tools on them. They come with them. Some you can buy them individually, but you take your bobbins and you put them all on these little spikes and it holds those bobbins there so that you can easily draw the yarn off of those and spin it, spin them together on your spinning wheel. I don't have one of those. Never had the finances to get one and don't have one on my spinning wheel. So I just took a shoebox and a couple of um, knitting needles because that's what I have. You can use dowel rods, but be, you need to be careful with the dowel rods um, that they don't like slide out of the box. The um, knitting needles have a little edge on one of the tips of them, so it's not going to slide out. But your bobbins need to be able to turn. Um, so you, if you get a dowel rod, it needs to be small enough that your bobbin can easily spin on it um, because you're going to be spinning that uh, fiber off, the your yarn off, and you need it to come off easily. So um, I only have three bobbins, so one is always on my spinning wheel. The other two I can fill up. Um, I've got one that's got some yarn on it. Um, I'll fill another one up and then take this bobbin off put it on my spinning wheel, put the full bobbin on here, and then I will ply these two bobbins together on that third bobbin. That's called a two-ply when you're spinning two um, strands of yarn together. That's a two-ply. If you have three strands, it's three-ply, so on and so forth. The more strands that you ply together, the stronger that yarn is going to be. Two-ply for me is fine. I don't mind it. I um, enjoy it. I feel like I actually um, get more from my yarn um, if I just use a two-ply, frankly, than if I'm putting more into more strands on the same um, scheme. It totally is personal preference. Um, two-ply works just fine. Um, I use I mean, that's all I do, and I use those in projects. So um, it really is what whatever you want to do. I have one of these, a little pot, okay? Um, and what I do with this is if I have a ball of yarn, um, it can be incredibly annoying to have a ball of yarn and trying to ply it. Um, to another piece of yarn and it's rolling all over the place. So you put that ball of yarn inside your pot. Put the end or bring the end of the string out and then set it on the ground or wherever. It keeps that ball of yarn in there and it keeps that ball from rolling all over the place, from getting tangled. Um, so that's been a lifesaver when I have balls of yarn. Also, what I recommend is just pre-cutting some pieces of yarn. You're going to use these at the end when you have skeins to keep the, um, the individual threads of yarn together as you keep them in a group. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, but I would recommend that. Okay, so to start off, we want to go with this. We need a lead on your bobbin. So I would recommend, oh, two feet. You can do three feet um, of regular yarn and you're gonna fold it in half. Okay, so you have folded your yarn in half. You're going to slide it under your bobbin and put the two long pieces through the hoop Okay, that's the first part. Now what you're going to do is take the end of those two strings, bring it around the bobbin, and now you've got a loop here, and you're going to take those extra strands and put it through the loop. Okay, and then tighten it up. 
That is called a no-slip lead. And now you're ready to go. So you have your no-slip lead. What you need to do now, and it depends on which way you're going to spin your spinning wheel. Like I said, um, with the drop spindle, same thing as for this spinning wheel. I always spin my first threads counterclockwise. And so if I'm going to spin it counterclockwise, I'm going to put my lead through these hooks on the left side. And you start it up at the top. Now, there's a hole right here, and this is mine. The most spinning wheels, I believe, are pretty much the same as far as this goes. Um, in fact, I think they, they really all are. So, you have a little hook. Um, a lot of times spinning wheels will come with these hooks. If not, um, they are available to buy. So you're going to put the hook in this orifice until that hook comes out in the hole. And you're going to get that yarn under the hook. Ding, ding, ding. All right. I know my hand's in the way. And you're going to pull those pieces of thread out of the orifice. So now what you're going to do, same thing as you did with the drop spindle. You're going to draft out some fiber, get it a little thinner, nice and easy. And you're going to put the drafted fiber in with your lead. Okay. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to pinch here at the tip of the lead. Now, to get the, the spinning wheel going, what you want to do is give it a flick. Okay. Um, you can't ever just press on the foot pedal. You need to give your spinning wheel a flick to get it going and then you can start pedaling with your foot. So we've begun to get some spin in here. I'm going to draft out. Do the same thing with your pinching hands. Okay, I've got enough spin on here that I can go ahead and we can get this spun on to the bobbin. Yep. There we go. I have a little piece of the yarn hooked on one of the, the hooks. All right, so typically I wouldn't have to manually do that, but I did have a little piece of yarn that got stuck on the hook. All right, so I have plenty of twist in here. Again, don't let the twist get into your drafting zone because it gets really hard to draft that wool out. Pinch your back hand when you're ready to let go of your front hand to let the twist in. Okay, so we're going to start the spinning wheel again. I'm going to let that fiber go right in. Oops. Draft, pinch, Put your, pinch your fingers together, let it go into the spinning wheel. And then you'll get used to how you need to draft. There's a couple different ways to draft. This is a uh, long draft. I'm pulling the fiber away from the spinning wheel. I am not playing tug of war with the spinning wheel at all. I'm letting it take the fiber on. Yep. So here I am drafting away from the spinning wheel. That's one way to do it. This hand is just simply pulling very loose and light. My left hand does not let go of that twist. So that's a long draft. Now if you, when I first started I was not able to do a long draft like that. I had to do a short draft. Which is, it really depends on what the person wants to do. There's no right or wrong way to draft, actually, as long as you're getting the prod what you want. Okay, so give it a flip. A short draft is to pull the fiber towards the spinning wheel. Instead, I'm just simply holding loosely with my right hand and I'm drafting 
with my left hand. No wrong way to do that. You have a little more control when you're not used to doing it. Doing a short draft like that. And again, like I said, that's how I started off. Okay. Now, I'm going to pinch this off with my right hand. And what you need to do, because this, there are some spinning wheels that are wonderful and great, and I'd love to have one, <laughs> where it has this runner that goes along like this. It doesn't have these hooks that are stationary like mine. It has this runner that goes back and forth, and so it fills this bobbin by itself. But this one does not have this. It has stationary hooks. So when this bobbin starts to get full on this one hook, I need to move it the thread down to the next hook. Um, you don't want it to build up too high um, in one area or it will start to fold over on itself and then it gets tangled. Um, it gets difficult to get the yarn off. Okay, so I'm going to wind it on a little bit, make my lead here a little shorter. Okay, give my spinning wheel a flick start drafting. Don't play tug of war with your spinning wheel. It should be a nice smooth relaxed ride. <laughs> if you feel like you're pulling against the spinning wheel, that you're pulling against this yarn, your tension may be too tight and so you need to adjust the tension. The spinning wheels are different and so it, um, adjusting the tension in the different spinning wheels is different. So um, you need to know how your spinning wheel works and what's comfortable for you. You may need to slow down with your foot pedal. If you feel like it's pulling too much, the tension may be fine, but you may be um, too quick with your foot. So let's check the spin on here. I'll pull it out a bit and then check and see. This is good. See it has uh, twisted up on itself like that. It's not, um, if there's too much spin, it will look like a whole bunch of corkscrews, like a little pig's tail. And that's too much spin. Um, and just makes it difficult to get a nice piece of yarn out of that. Okay, so I have finished um, creating the individual strings of yarn. So now we're ready to ply. I've got two of my strands right here and I'm going to twist it clockwise now. And this process goes really quickly. Just don't put a lot of spin into it. Just get it twisted and let it go. And that's all it is. When you are plying yarn, you can go ahead and test and see if it's um, got enough twist or, um, you know, that the twist is right. It should either, when you put it together like this, twist very loosely or it will just simply hang. And so either is fine, it's got a little twist and that's okay, that's what you want. So now we've gotten to the part that the fiber is plied, it's ready, it's turned into yarn, my bobbin is full. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put it on our Nitty Knotty, okay? So you're just going to hold a portion of that thread on the Nitty Knotty and then you are going to wrap it around. I'm gonna get my hands right here. Oh. Okay, and then you're just going to keep doing this until your entire bobbin is emptied. So I've got the whole skein on my Nitty Knotty at this point. This is where you're going to use your small cut pieces of yarn. I'm going to attach those loose ends and I'm just going to make a slip knot 
um, so that it's easy to get off when I'm ready to get it off. And I'm just simply going to tie each side. So there's four sides, so I need four of those little pieces of yarn. It keeps all those pieces of yarn in order and it keeps them from getting all tangled. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to slide your yarn off and you're going to twist it. And then fold it up on itself and there you've got your thumbs through the two ends just like this. You're going to put one of these sides through the loop at the very end and that's how you secure your skein. So now your yarn is ready to go. Um, the next step would be washing it, in which case you need to have um, some warm water, not hot water, but a little warmer than lukewarm. Put some dish, dawn, uh, dish soap in there, uh, like Dawn, um, and then just stir the, the soap in there without your skein in there um, to get the soap in there. Leave your skein in just sitting. Don't mess with it because it can felt your wool. Leave it in for about 10 minutes and then you're going to gently take your skein out and gently just get some of that water out. We don't want to felt it. Um, dump your water out, put in some more warm water, some more soap, and it's not a lot of soap, it's just a little bit. Put your skein in again, let it sit for about 10 minutes, do the same thing, bring it out gently get some of that water out, empty that water, and then get some fresh water that doesn't have any soap. Um, and just this, the third time will be cold water. Leave your skein in there for about five minutes this time. Take it out. And then the way you want to dry it is uh, put it on a towel and you're just simply going to roll the towel and the skein up together and that will get the excess water out. Then what I do, <clears throat> so I get a hanger and I get um, some sort of um, squeegee bottle. Anything works, you know, if you have a bathroom cleaner or anything like that. As long as it has that handle that you can squirt with, that's fine. Um, you're going to put your skein right on top of the head of the um, hanger. And then on the other end, you're going to hang that squirt bottle whatever bottle it is and you're just going to leave it hang and I hang it like right in the bathroom um, off of the shower so that while it's dripping it's dripping right in the bathtub and you just leave it like that until it dries and that helps give weight to your yarn um, helps straighten it out a little bit helps get whatever kink you may have left in your yarn it gets it out and then you can take off these little strings, you can reuse them for the next time. And that is it. That's the whole process from the beginning to the end. And so if you were just starting out with spinning, I hope that you've learned something. Um, add those books that I mentioned, um, respect the spindle and start spinning. Um, just add those to the, your library if you can. There's plenty of good books out there. Those are just the two that I've gone through and recommend. Um, and just, enjoy your spinning. When you get frustrated, remember, walk away from it. That's the best thing you can do. Just take a break because there will be times that you get frustrated for sure. So walk away and then come back later and happy spinning.